In this video, we're going to have a look at mixed examples of geometry of straight lines. In the last few videos, we had a look at all the different properties of straight lines. Firstly, angles on a straight line that always add up to 180 degrees. Next up, a revolution where the angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. And then also vertically opposite angles where two straight lines intersect. These two angles are then equal in size. Then we focus on three properties for parallel lines. Firstly, corresponding angles that are equal in size. And the same goes for alternate angles. And lastly, we saw that the sum of the co-interior angles will always be 180 degrees. When doing a geometry question, you need to take all of these possibilities into account and remember to always supply a reason for whichever property you use. Example 1. Calculate the size of the angles that are indicated with lowercase letters. Firstly, I'm going to have a look at the sketch and see that there are two pairs of parallel lines. And for these, I can then use my F, U or N. Now, starting off with angle A, you will see that angle A can form part of an N, which means that angle A is 58 degrees. With my reason, alternate angles, and here the parallel lines were line AB and line CD. Next, I'm going to focus on angle B, and here you will notice that we have a known interior angle which means we can make use of the U for co-interior angles. For this, I know that angle B plus the 110 degrees should equal 180 degrees because they are co-interior angles, once again with the same pair of parallel lines, AB and CD. Angle B then has to be 70 degrees. As soon as you calculate an angle, add it to the sketch. Because in this case, if we now move on to angle C, you will see that angle C along with angle B forms part of an F. This means that angle B and angle C are equal. So angle C is also 70 degrees with the reason corresponding angles. But this time we used the second pair of parallel lines, which was GH and IJ. For angle D, we don't need the parallel lines because angle C and angle D lie at the same point and are formed by two straight lines crossing, which means angle C and angle D are vertically opposite angles and therefore angle D is also 70 degrees with my reason vertically opposite angles. For angle E you now have two options. You can go with the N of alternate angles or you can make use of the F for corresponding angles. But either way you will get to E also being equal to 70 degrees. I'm going to choose to use my F, so that is corresponding angles, with my parallel lines being AB and CD. And when I now finally move to angle F, you can see that F and E lie at the same point on a straight line, and therefore F plus the 70 degrees of E should equal 180 degrees, and that means that F is 110 degrees. Example 2. Calculate the value of x. If you have a look at the sketch, you will realize that no parallel lines are indicated. So even though we might have considered using a u, we are not allowed to because we do not know whether kl is parallel to mn. What we can say is that we have two lines intersecting at point T and therefore the vertically opposite angles are equal. So 
the angle of 5x minus 30 degrees should be equal to 240 degrees minus 4x because they are vertically opposite angles. If I now make use of some algebra to get all my variables on one side, I will add 4x on the left and for the constants, I will add 30 degrees on the right. So 9x is equal to 270 degrees, which means that once I've divided both sides by 9, x is equal to 30 degrees. Question B. Is KL parallel to MN? And give a reason for your answer. We have just determined the value of x. This means I can now go and calculate the actual size of angle RTN as well as the size of angle LRT. Angle RTN was given as 5x minus 30 degrees, but we now know that x is 30 degrees, so we have 5 times 30 minus 30, which means the angle is 120 degrees. Similarly, I can calculate the size of LRT, which was given as 2x. We now know that that is then 2 times 30, so the angle has a size of 60 degrees. We've just calculated the size of these two angles without using parallel lines. But if we now go and have a look at these two angles, which also form co-interior angles, we can see that they do add up to 180 degrees. That means that the two lines have to be parallel. So we can answer the question saying yes, KL is parallel to MN, and the reason for that is because the co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. In this example, we now also used algebra in our geometry, and we saw that all the properties can also be used backwards. In this case, we knew that the co-interior angles add up to 180, and we could then accept that the lines are parallel.